95. That's quite big. Impressive. That is the number of people that Behaviour laid off about three months ago. And judging by the recent patch notes, clearly none of them are on the balance team because they've managed to do something only heard of in folklore. Piss off both killer mains and survivor mains simultaneously. It really is quite the accomplishment. So let's have a little look-see at these patch notes together, shall we? No. Now originally this was a video where I went through all the different perks and the changes from the recent upcoming pack But it was just me talking at you and I feel like it was kind of meh So instead I've completely redone the video and we're just going to be talking about the Skull Merchant changes And probably the Mori changes because a little known fact about me I actually enjoy the Skull Merchant a lot the fu Who is it? What? I should kick your fucking ass These upcoming changes that they have proposed however are a complete joke So first we're going to go over them and then we're going to discuss them Change They've decreased the hinder penalty when scanned by a drone to 5%, down from 10%. They have also removed the fact that she gets haste when you scan a survivor. They also reduced the number of scan lines that a drone has from 2 down to 1. They've also made it so that drones are always in their active state and that the hidden state no longer exists. And they've also made it so drone lines are now invisible beyond 16 meters. So essentially what they've done is hit this killer with four massive nerfs and not done anything to compensate for those nerfs. Now there's no beating around the bush here, she's dead with these changes. She was already a mid-tier killer and they have just nuked her entire kit because everyone and their grandma hook aside against her which means that she has a ridiculously high kill rate and their behaviour are reading that as she's massively overpowered. In fact, the main reason you never see gameplay of me from her is because anytime I actually try to play her, hook aside and is so prevalent that it's a genuine struggle to just get a normal gameplay in her to the point I don't even bother trying anymore. So what do these changes actually address? Absolutely nothing for either side. We're going to start with the survivor's side. There's two reasons that people hook side versus her. One, she has irreparable brand damage from the three gen meta and these people will just hook side versus her all the time no matter what and no matter what state she is in. Two, they don't find her power engaging to play against because they believe it entirely revolves around putting a drone at a loop and getting a free hit or running off from the loop. Now we'll ignore the fact that clone literally has the exact same gameplay loop to play against and can hinder immediately in a chase rather than needing to scan someone four times to trigger it and yet people don't seem to complain about him nearly as much as they do Scully. Well let's address the situation shall we? Do these changes actually do anything to improve this situation? Aside from harping the scan lines, no they don't, and if anything the removal of the haste massively reduces the chances of getting a hit in the first place, meaning skull merchants will be solely relying on the hinder effect to gain the hit basically forcing the playstyle of forcing scans to the drone to get free injuries. The exact thing people are complaining about. Now, in regards to halving the scan lines, this legitimately does improve the counterplay for her at loops. But there is an issue with this. Most people don't even understand her power in the first place to begin counterplaying it. This is not hyperbole from me. This is what I have personally experienced any time I explain her power to anyone, whether it be someone who pops in my chat, my friends, or other streamers. So let's quickly go over it. You will not be scanned by her drone unless the scan line passes over you. On top of this, if you are standing still or crouching, it will also not scan you. This is her counterplay. She's a mouse one killer where at loops you need to time your crouches to not be scanned while trying to do the mind game on her. And it's your job to try and extend the time you don't have a claw trap on you as long as possible or to run with the direction of the drone to avoid being scanned as you move between loops. However, most people don't know that you can crouch to avoid the scan in the first place so they don't even know the core counterplay to this mechanic. This means that the mass amount of people who still don't understand how she even works are still going to get scanned by the drone. And those people who do understand the counterplay are now definitely not going to get scanned by the drone because its strength has just been obliterated tenfold by reducing the number of scan lines from two down to one. So she is yet another killer that has been completely annihilated by behavior because people do not understand her counterplay. In fact, actually seeing someone know the counterplay is so rare that it becomes an event. Now, do not get it twisted. I'm not here to claim that her counterplay is particularly engaging. It's not, but it is far from being the least engaging power to play against like a lot of people claim. And as I mentioned prior, I would much rather play against a skull merchant than a clone because it takes significantly longer for a skull merchant to hinder the survivor in the first place than it does for a clown. And unlike the clown, you can actually fairly easily avoid the hinder in the first place by using the creation mechanic, which means there is actually something that you can actively do as a survivor 
to play against the power. Now I'm going to move on to another thing. As I mentioned, I do enjoy the Skull Merchant, and more specifically, I've enjoyed her since the start of her introduction into this game. A big reason I used to enjoy her so much was how varied her add-ons were. Unfortunately, with the 3.0 rework, they completely annihilated her add-ons. So much so that she went from having the largest collection of usable add-ons to having about five. Specifically, bring back the old 1.0 ultrasonic speaker. This made it so if you had a claw trap on you and you vaulted a pallet, it would break the pallet. On top of this, all of her current add-ons with the effect claw trap survivors suffer from X status effect used to be when a survivor was scanned by a drone, they would suffer from the same status effect. So changing these add-ons back to being scanned would mean that you could actually get use out of these add-ons more reliably in chase to try and get the hit. Rather than having to rely on hinder, and since they just nuked the difficulty of trying to get the scan in the first place, I think having the effects trigger on the scan would be fine. Add-ons would be an amazing area to try and make it more engaging to play with these nerfs so it isn't just a kick in the nuts for Skull Merchant players, but apparently Behaviour didn't think about that. Now Behaviour, if you push these changes live without significant buffs elsewhere to the Skull Merchant, you are setting an extremely dangerous precedent. What you are essentially saying is, hey guys, if enough of you hook aside versus killers you don't like, we're going to nerf them into the ground, because we won't bother looking at the stats to see if survivors died from herkicides and only care about the kill rates. I don't need to explain how this kind of balance in a community of people who are so entitled that simply playing a killer gets people to spam negative rep on your profile is a dangerous precedent. And no, that is not an exaggeration. In fact, this is my Steam account, and if we go there into the comments of the last person who commented on my profile, you will see it's a negative rep skull merchant and what you're doing is you're basically empowering these kinds of people who complain for simply just playing a killer breaking news gamers the community manager for behavior has confirmed that gotten her to an unplayable state is in fact intentional until they can rework her to and i quote a healthier state that's right lads and ladettes Scully is going to be absolutely toilet tier until they rework the killer whenever the fuck they can be bothered, which given their track record, could be literal years. Might I remind you, Behaviour, that you've reworked Skull Merchant now three times and fucked up every single one of them. You've reworked Sadako about eight times, and there's still a fucking critical bug on one of her main mechanics that has existed for seven months now. From the last rework that you did, which you are still yet to fix despite it being reported multiple times, you reworked the twins, which people also had to wait multiple years for, and it was so dog shit that you scrap the entire thing just one PTB in, and you think making a killer absolutely toilet tier until you can shout out another half ass rework is acceptable. Well, that's reassuring, isn't it? Now, this next bit will be on the upcoming Morris system, and it's a remnant from the old video I was doing before I switched it to just a Skull Merchant one. If you genuinely want the full video of me talking through all of the perk changes and such, I might release it. But here's the Morris section, which was so astronomically more on it that I'm still going to talk about it. Now we start off the rip with one of the dumbest changes that they could have possibly done, and that's the new Mori system. When I read the roadmaps leading up to this patch, where they said that the Mori was changing, I assumed that they were going to adjust the system that they had tried before. This is the one where everyone was on the ground, and the game automatically ended with a Mori. WRONG! WRONG! Instead, what they did was make it so you could kill the final survivor, base kit. So the current yellow Mori is now base kit. They then changed all the Mori offerings to be blood point incentives for doing the Mori. This has two glaring flaws. First is that you are now encouraged to slug for the 4k with the blood point incentive. And anyone who has seen my adept video knows I hate it how behavior encourages this playstyle with the adept's achievement. And now they've done it again for Mori's. The second is they have deleted the varied playstyle that the current Mori system offers. Where each one of the different offerings will do something ever so slightly different so it can actually change up the game. My personal favorite is using the green or ebony Mauris to kill a survivor who's second stage. This also stops you from getting your hook perk values such as pain res or pop. It's kind of a give and take and it adds to the overall depth of Dead by Daylight. So we've done the gameplay down, we've encouraged the shitty playstyle and we haven't addressed the situation where games drag out during a bleed out. Congratulations behaviour, you fucked up on every front here. If you made it this far, you have my sincere gratitude. Thanks for watching the video gamers, and for those interested, there is currently a 500k blood point code of blood pint that you can redeem in-game. Other than that, have a great day, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now. So